What is going on guys? Uh, Dr. D here, um, bringing you a war recap from a uh, recent uh, random war. Uh, this is going to be the first recap that I do for One Hive Swarm. Um, and so let's go ahead and get to this. Uh, one of the cool things about doing recaps for Swarm is that we're able to highlight not only our core members, but um, some of our up and coming members, as well as uh, some recent recruits that are currently in the clan and trying to make um, core. You'll see that I'm coming at you from uh, my alternate account. Um, <laughs> I love that name. Uh, all right, so let's uh, go ahead and pull up our war log. Um, we're going to look at this war against uh, Myanmar land. Um, now, I noted that, uh, or I saw that in some of Wiser's last videos, uh, there were some comments, at least on the last video with Dark Avengers, that people wanted to see more Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11 content. And uh, we've got uh, two Town Hall 11 uh, triples and a Town Hall 10 triple from a recruit who actually just made core about 10 minutes ago. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you those as well as um, a couple of uh, attacks from some of our Town Hall 9s. Again, another recruit. Um, and then uh, a core member, and we're going to watch an attack from our uh, fearless leader, uh, Clutch. So let's go ahead and let's start down here at the bottom. Um, we are going to go not all the way to the bottom, so I've just got a few that I've picked out here to watch. Let's go ahead and start with Humbert. Humbert right now is a recruit. I believe this was his first war, and so you'll see that uh, he's actually coming in here with a shattered entry, Gobaho. Uh, clears this base very quickly. It's a ring base. Lots of internet bases this war, unfortunately, but that's the way it goes sometimes. I'll tell you what, I actually, uh, <laughs> I wind up having more trouble often with uh, internet bases than I do with the um, more difficult uh, anti-three-star bases that we face a lot of times. At any rate, um, these ring bases like this, the, the, the goal, if you're going to bring Valks, is to try and set a really good funnel on the first layer of that ring, and if possible, the second layer of that ring as well. Um, this way you're able to push, push those Valks all the way into the core, get those Expos taken out right off the bat, and um, provide some good tanking so that you can start bringing Hogs around the outside. And you'll see that he does that. He looked like those Valks were going to run around, but they came back. They jumped into the core, Expo is gone, Town Hall is gone, Second Expo is gone, and he's just trickling in hogs around the uh, back end there. Um, hasn't even used Queen's ability yet, still got one heal spell left and a poison. Um, basically, this base is gone, we're talking about three defenses at this point. Um, there goes the last heal. And we're going to go ahead and speed this up because at this point, it is nothing but cleanup. Um, oh, I guess he had a cannon over there on the edge, but uh, there we go. Um, a nice uh, triple by Humbert. Um, get that cleanup out of the way. Beat that base in under two minutes. Tree star in the bag. Nice job, Humbert. All right, uh, we're going to move on to Mitch Lovin. Uh, so Mitch uh, tripled base 25 here and uh, before we get going you can see that this is an internet base and several of these are going to be internet bases <clears throat> this base in particular uh, I tried because of those centralized air defenses that do not overlap I thought this is going to be a perfect base for a penta this uh, is easily lured. That queen jumps the wall, and in fact, in my attack, um, I dropped my king uh, right up um, above this uh, um, uh, dark barracks. Um, she jumped that wall, and I took her out with my king. Uh, but man, my penta completely fell apart. Um, Mitch, on the other hand, comes in with a quad lalo. You'll see that he took almost the full amount of time. He was at about three minutes. Uh, Zabquake uh, pulls the CC up there, brings the king in. I would have brought that king in at a different spot to make sure that that queen jumps. She doesn't jump there. It doesn't matter. He does wind up getting the queen with his queen. 
Uh, and he winds up killing the CC just like he should. And the nice thing about using that Zap Quake is he's going to be able to provide a nice, um, easy path for his hounds and his loons to work their way all the way around. So we'll scan back here. And he's still got two rages in the bag there to use. He starts bringing in those loons. One hound is going to pop. There it goes. Drops that first rage. That's down. He's got three hounds on that single AD. Uh, only two ADs left. Obviously, um, he's, he's doing good as far as that goes. You'll see that one of these hounds does not actually pop, I believe. Um, but, uh, here we go. Moving on to the last AD, and you'll see that Mitch is going to bring in a couple of loons on the back end here, take out these defenses. Only one of them targets air. Uh, and that is about it. Um, those loons are really taking some damage from that wizard tower. And that's, of course, something that you've got to look out for, right? Wizard towers have splash damage that will just eat loons alive. But there we go. Uh, it is all over with. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Mitch Lovin. Who do we have next? Ah, all right. Uh, next is going to be our fearless leader, Clutch. So let's move up here to number 20. And let's check out this replay of Clutch. <clears throat> so Clutch is going to be bringing um, a mass Valk attack with uh, seven healers, healers for both the Valks and for his uh, queen. I believe he's got CC bowlers. He does have CC bowlers. Um, actually, I think that the, the other healers are probably for those CC bowlers. Um, at any rate, uh, we all know this base, right? This is called the V-Mote. Um, oftentimes it's uh, beat by coming in from the south with a shattered entry and uh, then working in hogs from over on the right side or the left side. You see it beat a lot of different ways. Um, that's the most common. That is absolutely not what Clutch does here. So let's go ahead and watch this attack. I think it's a, it's a fun attack. And I like the fact that he decided, I'm just going to do something different. It's an easily beatable base using that shattered Goho um, entry from the bottom. I, I've probably tripled this base, I don't know, a, a lot, dozens of times, right? Um, he comes in with a queen walk. Um, he's going to take out the top part of this base, and he's already starting with uh, some cleanup over on the left-hand side. Pulls that CC out. Poison comes down. Um, king is gone. Pretty soon the CC is gone. And as soon as that happens, CC comes out with uh, healers, and those bowlers go to work over there. Um, the uh, minion was over there so that they could set the edge to keep those bowlers on task. Uh, the last thing that you want is bowlers decide to go running uh, in multiple different directions, and then you just lose them, right? And it's an expensive tribute. You can keep uh, five in that CC, and that's it. Um, okay, so uh, Valks go in. Um, they run into this moat a little bit, um, and... Uh, if you're going to use this V-Mote in the future, uh, guys, I would suggest trying to throw some uh, some spring traps up in that up in that area or something to stop uh, Valks just running wild in there. Um, troops start moving down. Uh, has not used King's ability or Queen's ability yet. Um, bowlers are still going strong. Valks are still going strong. He's got healers on those Valks. Uh, and now it's just pushing through the base. Um, we'll speed it up a little bit because you can see this is going to be this is going to be a triple. It's, an, it's a very very um, effective attack to use on a base like this. Um, and that's it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Clutch. All right, uh, let's move on to our first uh, 10v10 or only 10v10 that we're going to show here. Uh, this is Jay. Jay just made core. Um, an interesting note about Jay, when he first came into the clan, uh, you know, I think a lot of guys come into One Hive or the, the 2.0 family for their tryout, and th they're a little bit shaky, a little bit nervous. Uh, Jay <laughs> posted some 
uh, pretty interesting pictures right off the bat. One of them was him laying on the beach in a lobster suit. If I get permission from him, I'll throw it in a video in the future. Uh, at any rate, um, <laughs> the guy's got a great sense of humor, a uh, very funny guy, and um, this attack was, uh, he's also, uh, you know, just a, a very, very solid attacker. So um, you can see he's got some bowlers, he's got some miners. Uh, this is not your, your kind of uh, traditional, what we think of as, as uh, setting the edge and then bringing in um, the 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 miners to sweep across the bottom or to do what they've been calling the boner attack straight up the middle. Instead, you can see he comes straight in with bowlers with the uh, goal of taking out the CC and getting one of those um, uh, Inferno Towers. And there it goes. And also there goes the CC. Uh, then from the bottom, he starts bringing in uh, a whole row of miners, right? Um, the goal here is, of course, to keep those miners up and keep them healed, uh, and they will take out that second Inferno Tower. Uh, the nice thing about miners is once they go underground again, they start getting healed. So as they work their way up to an Inferno Tower, even if they're getting zapped a little bit, they duck back under, and as long as they're under that heal spell, um, they continue to get healed back up, then they pop up, they might get roasted a little bit by an Inferno Tower, then back down to get healed again some more. I'll be honest, I am not the best when it comes to talking about uh, the, the meta for miners and, and how miners can attack. Uh, that's something to watch on, on uh, the 2.0 recaps because Wiser really, really knows um, the, the AI for these things. Uh, at any rate, um, that is it. As we see here, he's going to walk up there, get that last uh, hut, and that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Jay. All right. Moving on, we have uh, Viking, and this is a Town Hall 11 versus Town Hall 11 triple, and Viking is going to be coming in with a, again, a mass minor attack. You can see this is um, somewhat of a, of a kind of a diamond donut type of base. Uh, and so what Viking is going to do is he's going to set an edge over here. And instead of creating the funnel like we normally think of, uh, he realized that those infernos are on single and that there is all kinds of stuff just on the edge of the inferno towers. And so he can walk those miners all the way around this base. And that is exactly what he's going to do. Of course, up here you've got, you know, um, Royals working a little bit, Queen working a little bit. No healers on her or anything. So he's just working them around. Um, occasionally, an Inferno Tower will lock onto a single miner. But when you've got mass miners and it's only locking onto a single one, um, it does about the same damage as an Archer Tower does until it kills that miner, um, uh, but it only does one at a time. It only kills one at a time. Uh, one of the interesting things about this attack is what's going to happen with this dragon and these minions. So you can see he has no air targeting troops anymore, right? It is all mass miners, and at this point, Viking has got to be thinking, crap. Uh, lots and lots of miners left, did an, a great job walking them around, but all air targeting troops are gone, and now he has a dragon that's just sitting there. Now the dragon, interestingly, has killed off the miner that it was initially focused on, and for some reason it decides it does not want any more to do with these miners. And it just watches. And I'm sure that the, uh, the guy, I don't know, Kai Yi, whoever this, this, this uh, owns this base, number six, he had to watch this replay and think, what the heck is going on? Why is that giant and that and that minion just sitting there? And I assume it has something to do with the, effect, the, the fact that um, miners, once they uh, are, are targeted, um, another defense, that, that same defense will not target them again until they pop back up. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but you can see uh, that CC just 
did nothing. Maybe there's something that I absolutely do not know about how these things work. That's that's possible. It's probably the case. But at any rate, I found that pretty odd. Um, okay, we have one video left. It's another Town Hall 11. Um, and this is uh, Sasuke. I think that's how you say his name. Sasuke Uchiha? I don't know. I, I messaged him to find out exactly uh, how you say it, but we'll find out. At any rate, um, he starts with a queen walk over here. He's starting to set the funnel. Um, he's also going to start up here with some giants, and, or a giant and some uh, bowlers in his BK. And obviously, um, you can kind of guess what's about to happen here. He's going to have a straight shot to the... Um, Eagle Artillery and to the Town Hall and to both of those uh, expos, it is a boner attack, right? Here they come, mass miners straight up the middle. A perfect funnel was set so that they can go straight through there. Right now, they're underneath the uh, Warden's ability. They, As soon as they get up there, he drops a Rage on them to get them pushed through that Eagle Artillery and the Town Hall as quickly as possible, as well as a heal to keep them up while the uh, CC is on them. Uh, notice here the CC is, in fact, targeting those uh, miners, um, but uh, it is to no avail. Um, miners push through, keeps them under heal, and now they are working their way around. They're going to split here in a second. There they're starting to, and some are going to go right. That dragon comes over to the queen and keep the miners healed up and it is all over with at this point, right? Um, there goes the queen and this uh, healer is actually going to come up and help out because these last few miners are going to get some uh, heal just long enough to kind of pull out these major point defenses. Then they're gone. Then he can use that last heal up here as, as needed. They are finishing up down there on some storages. There it is, the final heal. We'll speed this up just a little bit. And there goes that cannon, the last things, you know, wizard tower. And that's it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Sasuke. All right, that is it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed our first uh, recap from One Hive Swarm, or at least my first recap from One Hive Swarm. Um, check out some of the, the higher level attacks at the 2.0 uh, recap. There's a new Dark Avengers recap that just posted. It's a fantastic recap to watch. Uh, and we have a, a new Invicta recap um, posting. Uh, should, be, should be up here very soon with the sister clan of Above and Beyond. Um, until next time, take care.